Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill and welcome to my garden on this chilly fall day. I am so excited my bulb order finally arrived. These are bulbs that get planted in the fall but they'll bloom for me next spring and summer. And this is going to be really cool because what I've ordered are bulbs that are unusual. I could have ordered tulips, but unfortunately where I live, deer and gophers think they are absolutely delicious, and so there's no point in planting them. I could have ordered daffodils, but I have quite a lot of them, and they do really great here. But I wanted to order some specialty bulbs, and especially some bulbs that I saw in gardens in England this summer. So, let's get started on planting these. Let me show you the types of bulbs I ordered because they are all really cool. Now when you place a bulb order you will tend to get an information sheet that explains how deeply to plant the bulbs. And that is very important information. So this first one I wanted to show you, it's just a tiny little bulb. But this is Fritillaria meleagris or checkered Fritillary. They are extremely cool looking in the garden. Now they are going to grow up to a foot tall and the amazing thing is they need to be planted five to six inches deep. And that really surprises me considering how tiny these bulbs are, but I'm following the directions. Another thing that I got is Allium nigrum. Now this summer I went to the Garden Writers Conference and a keynote speaker who is an expert on bulbs in the Netherlands recommended this one. Now Allium nigrum is an ornamental onion so it's not edible. It has white flowers and is supposed to look really cool in a flower bed. They are going to grow 18 to 24 inches tall and you would plant them 6 to 8 inches deep. Another type of Allium I got is called Siculum bulgaricum. It is Sicilian honey garlic, again not edible. But these plants will grow 32 to 36 inches tall and they need to be planted 6 to 8 inches deep. Now this plant has the coolest flower heads. They look like little fireworks that have gone off. So they are going to look really nice in a grouping in the garden. Another thing I got that's unusual is Golden Fragrance Grape Hyacinth. This is a muscari. I have hundreds of the purplish blue grape hyacinths and I thought it would be neat to have a yellow one that also has a fragrance. This needs to be planted five inches deep and it's only going to grow five to six inches tall so that means that I need to put it near the front of a border. Another thing that was recommended during that keynote address is a type of crocus that does not get bothered by rodents and that is Crocus thomasinianus and I chose lilac beauty but it comes in several colors. This is going to be a real pretty purplish pinkish color. It needs to be planted four inches deep and it's just going to grow four inches tall but I think it's going to be really cool. Another thing that I got that I saw a lot of in England was Camassia or Camas Lily and I chose Lactolinii alba. So white flower, they're going to grow 24 to 30 inches tall. They look awesome in a flower bed. Now these bulbs need to be planted 5 inches deep. Now it's always important to have the right tool for the job. Gardener's Supply has asked me to test some of these new bulb planters that they carry. The brand is Intervail and they're really sturdy and nicely made. So this is a hand bulb planter. It has a somewhat sharp bottom. It's not dangerous, but it will cut down into the soil, which is nice. And you just push it down to the depth you need, kind of wiggle around a little bit. When you lift it out, provided your soil has some moisture in it, the soil will stay with it. You have a hole to put your bulb into and that's that. Then you just cover it over. But what I'm really excited to test is this long handled bulb planter. This is also made by Intervale. I have never used one before but again from that keynote address that I went to at the Garden Writers Conference 
the gal who was the speaker really recommended these as a back saver. And so basically, you're using your leg strength to make the hole and then you plant the bulb. So this has a nice lip on it that's very sturdy and you're going to use it to push down on into the soil instead of having to do a lot of this action. Again, it has the same type of a bottom to it and you're going to push it down in the soil to the depth that you need, pull it out, you're going to have a hole to put your bulb into, and then cover it over. So I'm very excited to try this. Another thing that I have is some markers just to mark my plantings because you know bulbs are invisible until they start growing and so these are also made by Intervail and they are nice and sturdy so I'm going to mark on them where I have planted the different bulbs. I'm standing out in the middle of my big flower bed and this is where most of my bulbs are going to go. Now you can really tell it's fall because there's a lot of the bed in the shade. It has not seen the sun today at all. And that's because the sun is so much lower in the sky already. Yikes! But that's okay. I'll try to film it so that you can see everything that I'm doing. Now when you're planting bulbs, it's really important to give it a little bit of thought beforehand. If you just plant a straight row, well, that's boring to be honest. And so think about planting things more in groups. But the other idea is kind of crazy. So again, in that keynote address that I went to, Jacqueline van der Kloot recommended mixing together the bulbs you're going to plant and then flinging them on the ground roughly where you want them to go and planting them where they land so they have a more natural appearance. I'm not very good at being random, but I'm really going to give this a go. <laughs> So I'm going to mix together everything but the short bulbs because those really need to go near an edge of the bed so I can see and enjoy them. So let's give this a try. Okay, here is my bucket of bulbs. I've got the camas lily bulbs in here. Those are really cool looking. And then I also have two different kinds of alliums. All of these bulbs are tall enough to where they can be planted away from the edges of the bed. Well, here goes nothing. This is actually kind of fun. <laughs> Who knew? Okay, that ought to give me a good start. I'm going to plant all of these bulbs that are within the bed with this long-handled bulb planter. So that's going to work out really great. And you know, I measured this cylindrical part of the bulb planter and it is exactly six inches. And that's the depth I want for all of these bulbs, so it's perfect. Now, before I get started, I wanted to point out that there's something you need to think about when you're putting your bulbs in. There is a root end and a pointy end, usually. Sometimes you will have a little bit of trouble figuring out which end is which, but always try to find an area where roots came out of. So obviously the roots are going down, the pointed end, if it has one, is facing up. Now let's see, where was this one? <laughs> okay. Look at that, all the soil is in here. I'm putting the bulb in. And then the interesting thing is when you go to plant your next bulb and you make a hole, that soil is going to come out, which is really quite a handy way to do this. It's my raven friend. <laughs> okay, so here's my soil for that first hole, plus an earthworm. Here's a hole for my allium, and it goes in this direction. Make the next hole, and then you can have your soil back. That is slick. Oh, 
I like it. Now that I have all of the taller bulbs planted, I wanted to get the smaller ones in. And here we go again, I've got the bucket, I've put all of the remaining bulbs in here. And these ones will grow anywhere from 4 to 10, maybe 12 inches. And so they're going a little bit closer to the edges of some of my flower beds. I'm going to use the hand bulb planter this time, just so you can see how it works. I have one last step and I wanted to pass it along as a tip to you just in case this applies to you as well. We live in a very rural area and because of that we have a lot of gophers and voles and they can cause a lot of damage. Now even though all of the bulbs that I planted today are deer resistant and rodent resistant, I figure it never hurts to have a little extra insurance especially since during the winter months we're not out here checking the flower bed. Maybe there's a bunch of snow on it and we won't know what's going on underneath. So what I do is I use a repellent. This one is called Molmax. There are other brands out there and it is coated in castor oil which rodents do not like and you just broadcast it on top of the area you want to protect. It lasts for a few months and it is totally worth it. Well, I hope you found this video really interesting and helpful, and I sure appreciate your watching it. In the meantime, if you have bought some bulbs, make sure you get them in the ground before it freezes. Happy gardening!